Hi everyone, so let's just keep on going with this last lesson. It's quite a lot in it to be fair. Right, so we're going to prove that something's increasing or decreasing. So this was on the spec paper, so we've added it. Uh, I'm not entirely certain if it's been on um, proper paper. But the important bit here is if it's increasing, the next turn is bigger than the one before. Hmm, that makes sense. And if it's decreasing, the next term is smaller than the one before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some equations and then just see if it works. So it tells me that un is n over n plus 1. So I just want something for un plus 1. So if I replace the n with an n plus 1, we get n plus 1 over n plus 2. So it's n plus 1 plus 1. Right, so let's have a look at my little formula. Now in the past, we've changed this this year. In the past, what we used to do was say, all right, if it's increasing, the difference is positive. So like un plus 1 minus un is greater than 0. But we're doing it a little bit different this year. It's a little bit easier. So I've got n plus 1 over n plus 2 is greater than n over n plus 1. So now if we just do a bit of rearranging, a bit of cross multiplying, a bit of expanding brackets, a bit of simplifying, let's see what we got. If you look, n squareds go, two n's go, and I'm left with one is greater than zero, which is clearly true. So therefore, un plus one is greater than un for all n, and the n is increasing. Now you have to be careful with this question for you, because in the pack for the last six years, it was a work out a decreasing one. Well, this isn't. This is an increasing one as well. So I'll, I'll just kind of initially set it up. Um, do you want to have a go? I'll just pause it and see what you can get out from it. Right, so that's what I've got to now. So you know n is the number in the list. n is a positive integer. If that's the case, 2n has to be greater than 0. So 2n plus 1 must also be greater than 0. So therefore, my un plus 1 is greater than un for all n. And un is increasing, as we've been telling us. So that's quite nice. Right, let's have a look at some compound interest. So this is new, a uh, bit of compound interest. Bound to get this one. Right, so it says, uh, investor A invests £2,000 on the 1st of January 2021. You've 3% interest. Interest is calculated and added at the end of the year. So it's done annually. Uh, how much will be in the account by 2020? Right then. So you know the 3% is multiplying by 1.03 from school. So the first year is 2000 at the end of the first year, it will be times by 1.03. At the end of the second year, 1.03 squared. End of the... Where are we? Uh, we're going from 2040, aren't we? So we're in 40 years. We'll check that out because I think it was 2020 at one point. Right, I'm just going to pause it because my calculator's done for 20, not for 40, so it's getting calculated. Bing! Update from Martin, we're doing 2020 for 2040. So in your pack, it might say 2040, so it turns into 2020. Because we've, um, we've kind of updated the pack um, right at the end of the year, so we've not had a chance to properly double check it. Right, so that should be going on. 
And off the answers in the front, which will be correct, I think we would have 361222. So that's doing it for 20 years, that's cool. Right then, let's have a think about this one now. So, it says investor B invests 2,000 per year starting in 2021 with 3% interest. Right, so but we're having 2,000 every year, aren't we? So the first year would just be the 2,000 times 1.03. The second year will be um, the invested year plus the one like the the previous year so the invested year plus the interest of the one before which is like a two thousand times one point zero three squared so you can see like the third year would be the newly invested year with the one point zero three plus the chunk of added interest from the third from the first year plus the chunk of added interest from the second year. So if I was doing like the 20th year, it'd be like a 2000 times 1.03. So that'd be like the invested for our final year. Then Kind of like I'm going to have the 2000 times 1.03 squared plus 2000 times 1.03 cubed plus all the way up to 2000 times 1.03. So the 20. Can you kind of see that? I hope so. Probably put them two the wrong way around so you're quite sure where. Yeah. But you kind of get the gist of it. So it kind of builds and builds and builds. Every year you're adding on 2,000 times 1.03, but then you're also multiplying every other part that you've got that you've added in by 1.03. Now, if you look, you've kind of you've formed the GP here, and there's two different ways of doing it. You could take the 2,000 out as a factor. And then have it as 1.03 plus 1.03 squared. Then we know you've got 2,000 times by an AP with A as 1.03 and an R as 1.03. But what I can do is if I clump this together, so that bit there is actually 2060, and then this is 2060 times by 1.03. This is the, the, the next bit times by 1.03. It gives me a GP where A is 2.03 and R is um, 1.03. Now I want the sum at the end, the total for the end of 2020. I'm very aware of the time, so I'm going to do a sum to 20. So remember, your sum to N is A, R to the N minus 1 over R minus 1 to keep R positive. So the sum of the first 20 terms is 2060, 1.03 to the 20 minus 1, over 1.03 minus 1. So that should give us, at the end of the 20 years, we've got uh, 55,352,097. pounds So can you see you've formed the GP? This one's quite hard, this one, but it's really nice. I wonder if that's everything. That could be everything for this lesson. Yay, it is. Right then. So sorry about those little changes. So we've got 2020 instead of 2040. And we've got a 356 somewhere. 356 on this problem solver. Other than that, everything's perfect. Right, well done everybody. Bye bye.